Surprise on you, it's Dab. What's up, gamers? Hello. That could be. That's, that's very. That's very risky, boys. I'll be honest. It was. It was. You, you it was right real depressing. About breath. thirty seconds. Oh really? I yeah. <laughs> uh, first things first. I'm not at my usual setup, so my lighting is ass. Deal with it. <laughs> um, hey guys, welcome Your back to Dungeon. Lighting is assholes. I wish, dude. Fuck, I wish my someone would just Yo. light up my asshole. My dude just got two guys at the side with the RGB belt plugs. Do you feel no, a dancing light, right? If you touch the little orb of light, do you feel anything? Like, could someone just realistically shoot a dancing light up in someone's butt and they wouldn't feel it? I don't uh, know. Torch-sized lights breaking them appear. Torch lanterns or glowing orbs that hover. I don't I mean, think... You feel something, because from a scientific level, I would light say... is a form of energy. And usually like, also maybe, it like, comes with heat. Maybe, like, at tops, something. it'll be like... A little warm, maybe, but like, you know what I mean? But I would say it it specifies you can make them look like torches. It doesn't specify heat or anything, right? Um, it's it's not the thing is is it's not an illusion, right? It is not illusion magic. It is True. evocation. If it was an illusion, I would say absolutely not, because it is an evocation cantrip. I like, could you turn that... someone into a flashlight and then just pull their pants down and bend over? Boom, light. You know what I mean? Well, Nessie, now that you said it, we're going to have to do it in campaign, so you've only opened yourself up to this. It's fucking funny. I mean, it says four <laughs> points within range. It doesn't say within range that you can see. Right? Exactly. So as long as the player you can... You, you, right, guys, I feel like we can. <laughs> You just I, put it I would a, say, how did you, dude, best new new prank. You do it, say like in someone's like mouth, they don't know, then they go to speak, and all of a sudden, just light comes out, and they're like, "What's?" <laughs> they the only problem that you have is that it costs your bonus action to keep moving them. Oh yeah. fuck! Ah, okay. So it stay every six is seconds. It worth it moves. the bit, maybe. <laughs> so, but you could make it appear in someone's butthole. Yes, although That's I funny. would say that even though it's not an illusion, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. I think you wouldn't feel anything. Hell yeah, that's all I wanted. Uh, welcome to the discourse. I do not have a black eye, Sassy. It's just the lighting. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't get punched. Um, I wasn't Get. able to prepare like a proper, you know, like a tweet of the week and all that sort of shit this week because I I I moved back to my parents' place the next two weeks to doggo sit. Brought my entire setup. I've worked Hello. every day of the week. Uh, I'm I just haven't had time. I'm sorry. Next week we'll have a proper. I'm gonna try and find a again. D &D tweet. But um, I really like. But uh, we're gonna let's just go to the meme section of Discord and just look we're at any of the TikToks for an hour we've been... and, and do some yapping about D and D in our, in our session. And we got some questions submitted, and I'm sure the gang will probably also have some questions or something. So we'll just we're just gonna yap for for an hour. Is that okay, guys? <laughs> Is that all right? Can we just yap? It's my favorite. No. Um, first things first. Announcements tomorrow evening. We're doing Call of the Night of the Deep on Laura's channel. Oh. Woo! Three, at... baby. At 7 p.m. Eastern 7 time. Eastern. So it's a late which one is for the EU gang. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. EU gang. 1 to 3 a.m. So. It's fine, dude. Sorry, fam. It'll nah, be on right. YouTube uh, afterwards. So. And of course, there's always a Twitch VODs page if you don't want to wait the day for it to get Pro to tip, YouTube. Because uh, VODs disappear. If you highlight the entire VOD, the highlight stays forever. So, like, pro tip, you want to make a playlist of the. Well, I mean, campaign. I want eventually it just go to the YouTube. It's like, no, yeah, I yeah, want yeah, them but views, like, I do the same so... for DS. Like, we have the YouTube channel, but I also have a collection <laughs> on the DS Twitch page yeah. that just has everything in, in a yeah. collection. Marvel. You know. Session three. Yeah. Here. It's going to be a fun time. We just had our big, basically, plot hook or intro to what the overarching story is going to be. And we got to, we're going to see what our characters. How how they feel about that? It's gonna be a good time. My dog was just like walking around, and he would, he walked the way he walks when he needs to piss. So now I was like, uh oh, you're like, huh? But he, uh? Cause it's still kind of a puppy, so it's not really. Yeah. He, he don't really understand where and when he. If can you be. gotta go, let the dogs out. Ethan, but and uh, I can keep he just the kind of going. he's he's also struggling <laughs> with the heat, so he was just like warm and just kind of like to move to yeah. a place on the floor where he hasn't laid down yet. So it's colder, I guess. I don't know. So it's cool. It's like yeah. the cold, the cool side of the pillow. You gotta <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Move um, other than that, uh, you know, Sunday, we're another DS. It's going to be episode 40? Yeah. Which also means that Sunday uh, yeah, is like, so. Sunday is two days prior to our one year anniversary of campaign two. So that's going to be fun. So Sunday Woo! is technically yeah. the one year anniversary for campaign two, uh, yeah. episode. We're just going to play the campaign as is, uh, but you know, that's fun. That's a fun little, uh, little, 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 little bit of trivia for you. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I promise I am paying attention, but my cat's meowing at the end of So I'm sat here, like, half leaning off my chair with one hand on the floor. I'm struggling, dude. I've, I've, I've been awake since 5am, because my parents and sister left on holiday at 5, so, like, the dogs were up in arms oh. because, oh my god, people are leaving. Why? Help, help, help. So I couldn't go back to sleep, so i just kind of been yeah. awake since. There's kitty. Um, but, uh, you know, we made it through the day, so it's 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 a vibe. Yo, it's almost like there's two, two cats. You got two cats <laughs> in um, the mirror. <laughs> so first things first, you know, we'll start off with something we always start off with. A little recap. What happened last session? Uh, the party met a total individual, uh, part of Captain Vera's Silex's crew of the Porcupine, uh, Kai, played by none other than old Shatter Geek. He's going to be joining us for the piratey, nautical, uh, seafaring, bitch queen story arc. It's coming up, so that's gonna be exciting. So he's gonna be here for a little while, to be fair, because I don't expect that to be a very short story arc. Um, so that's gonna be fun. Um, you know, the, the party was able to get some first impressions. Um, had another relaxing day, went to the spa, had some drinks, blah, 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 all that stuff. And then uh, the day after, followed up on a little bit of a, a, a quest, uh, some mercenary work for the three sisters that run the magic shop, uh, Giddy, Cheery, and Happy. Uh, and they um, have told the party, or had told the party, that uh, their artificer named Halivara, who lives in a tower uh, about a day outside of town, um, has gone dark. No, no communication, no deliveries, no shipments, and that's very uh, weird, because uh, normally he checks in once a week to see how, how they're doing, how the shop's doing, what they need, all that stuff. Um, so they didn't, they were worried, not necessarily just because their business also seemed genuinely worried about him as a person. They seemed to be pretty close as, uh, as, as friends as well as business partners. Um, so you answered the call, uh, went to the tower via, uh, teleportation circle that they have set up for easy back and forth, uh, between the tower and the shop. And, um, got approached by, uh, the Arcane Guardian Unit 005, or TAG for short, as he said, you could address him, or it. Um, and it informed you, uh, basically, Halivara's personal assistant. Uh, and it informed you that um, the tower, some kind of malfunction error, made it so that all the constructs in the tower uh, became hostile. Um, but there is a protective, like, layer of arcane magic that, that blocks out any of those types of signals from the basement, just in case, you know, like, it's, it's kind of like a... Like a bunker, just in case shit goes wrong, that he can, like, mm -hmm. if, if he sees it coming, he can put some of his, like, more prized creations and himself, and he'll be good. Um, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it down there when it happened, so the party went on and climbed the three or four floors, four, four floors uh, of the tower, Fought some uh, interesting look looking uh, creations of his in the form of metallic sentinels and uh, encountered a, a very hostile door as well. <laughs> uh, had to reset a password to, to get into to, into a teleportation unit that would teleport you to the like master bedroom of the of the place. It was a fun little tower. I had fun designing it. I, I kind of just wanted to see. What would futuristic technology look like in D and D? And that's kind of the way I, I approached uh, said uh, said tower uh, because it made sense. He's an artificer; he invents things. So, like, if anyone has technology like that, it'd be someone like him. You know what I mean? So I figured, ah, oh, yeah, give it a, a little something different, a little something different. Uh, but it turns out that he was working on a commission for the Blue Sentinels. Um, I kind of joked about it, uh, like mech suits, but yeah, kind of, yeah. just like large like 15 foot tall full plate wearing soldiers that can be controlled from the inside by an actual person to just stand way stronger in a battle uh, in case in case of emergency you know say somebody wants to lay siege on strathmore or eldilon they can whip those out to form a better line of defense uh but something went wrong when he was working on one he got locked inside of it and uh no. Yeah, he was stuck inside, and the party basically had to bash the fuck out of this metal or this 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 metallic blue sentinel uh, to free him, which he did. And he then awarded you with uh, ten platinum each as a thank as an extra thank you. Gave Jax, uh, you know, recognizing a fellow tinkerer and artificer, gave him 
uh, an upgrade to his uh, Tinker's Tools, a way more advanced tool set for him to use on his next creations and, and whatnot. And then he went back to uh, Strathmore to report back to the Three Sisters, got your reward, 500 gold and store credit each. And um, you have about half a day worth of chilling left because we kind of ended it there. So you still have like half that day left to kind of relax. And then tomorrow in game will be the day that the porcupine arrives and you guys can set we sail. We also made a new friend. <laughs> did you? Yeah. We did. We have a whole new player. Whole yeah, new no, I mentioned that in the beginning. Don't, don't you mention that. <laughs> oh. I, mentioned, I mentioned kind of beginning. Never mind. <laughs> don't worry. I, just, I was, I was I like, which know. NPC is that I yeah, can count as a friend? <laughs> Halivara, I've had, maybe? I've or no one of the sisters? Today. I've had no caffeine today and I'm feeling it, so... I've had four shots so of espresso and so, I'm on my um, second monster. It was just a... It was, nice. a, it was a, a more... You know, I didn't... You had your Anime Beach episode. I wanted you to have you guys to have something to do but that wasn't super heavy, so I figured this sort of quest would be... Just something light after all of the the shit you've you've uh, you've been through. Just something light, still keep you busy, make some money, do some mercenary work, make a name for yourself, but in a less way less threatening than some of the stuff that you've come up against so far. Yeah. Um, so if I'll ask you, what did you think of last session? Did you guys enjoy it? Any 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 questions? Anything that you guys want to yeah. bring up? Mention? I mean, any session where we get to meet a new like guest is always going to be a fun one and especially oh i just love the the visual and the flavor of osg's character yeah. this like crusty old tortle pirate who's massive with a parrot and the the flavor of how the his subclass works like the spores are those like the spores are released from like living coral and stuff that grows on him like that's sick that's yeah cool. and like when he described it it gave me very like uh david jones's crew vibes yeah. from Pirates of the caribbean very cool yeah the barnacles and shit like stuck on his shell yeah. and then the fucking it, coral cool. like that like is not not like just like there it's like actually like growing from himself kind of thing yeah. very cool very cool because when we find out he's undead and the coral's inside of him controlling everything <laughs> yeah it's like uh, uh isn't there like a, like parasect, like a parasite that, that does parasect that? in pokemon is no, that i swear there's like an irl it. like parasite that there is there's like, like a type of fungal parasite that's like because it's, it's that's kind of what they based the last it's of a, us on like it, 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 fungus, it's like, it, 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 it it makes, like bugs do things or whatever it affects ants specifically yeah and it gets into the this fungus grows into its brain causes it to climb as high as it can and then it latches on to whatever it's climbed and dies and the mushroom oh. grows out the back of its yeah. head and then releases its spores so they travel further in the wind that's fucked up bro actually yeah. nature would be crazy why do scary, i know yeah. it i have no idea um but yeah uh I, I had a lot of fun with like just designing the 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 the, the, the like tower i kind of wanted to give it like an old school wizard's tower vibe but with a twist and with some with some with some quirky fucking robots uh, and I also whatnot. loved how he managed to sow so much like doubt doing nothing wrong which is like I'm here to check on the cargo and just not saying what it <laughs> is everyone's like shady sketchy what's in it and like two of the party have to immediately because chaos crew and no impulse control like we must go look inside and like see if he's yeah, lying it's literally, literally just like basic ass ship supplies, supplies like just making food, sure we're prepared drink, and all that shit and man. then everyone's like there's mm -hmm. no way be an illusion so there's yeah no brooks way really went on a, on a fucking like conspiracy theory doesn't make any fucking sense uh no, 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 really like because um, to brooks it doesn't because to brooks stuff like that <clears throat> you know he he's never really sailed before other than being on a ship once as a as a uh passenger yeah so to him he's like you know, like, we have rations. Rations aren't hard to come by. We buy food, everybody. Like, why would you go and check on something like that? Because to him, the act of... Ch he's he's a very laid-back person. He's not the sort of person to go and check on something unless it's super important. So to you, him, he's like... You need why food you to live. I call yeah, that but important. He does, in his mind, <laughs> he's like, he doesn't understand... He doesn't necessarily have that concept of... He's never been in a position where he... Like, Brooks has never been in a position where he's struggled for food or, like... Like, they've had money worries a bit when he was a kid. Yeah. But he's he's very... Like, he's not had that that sort of hardship ever of... Yeah. We've only got four days worth of food and we're six days away from our journey. 
Yeah. See, for me, that so, was like a moment of the like in character, a harsh like, oh yeah, just like thinking I'm so, like at least my past is very different from almost privilege. all the people I'm traveling with because I like Daigon's probably gone a week without eating before and been desperate for food and like not by choice by just like circumstances and stuff and before she picked up the like because in her because of her background like the outlander or whatever it's like you can find food and fresh water as long as the uh, land provides it mm -hmm. and my theory she had to learn that like that wasn't ever an innate skill and that was yeah, came yeah. by i'm wandering the wilderness by myself because i've been exiled and i don't know how to survive yeah no, so exactly. it was a very big moment of like wow these people have never wanted for basic necessities before okay and just uh <laughs> A reality check in my head. But, uh, you know, all Zelda ends well. Uh, the crates turn out to be normal and uh, triggered a silent alarm in one of the boxes that was meant for... Um... <laughs> what shop was it again? I do... I'd have to go back I think it was a, it was a... No, the, no, the trade company in, in Eldilon. Yes. Uh, all the boxes go. were, like, enchanted to like, give off an alarm if the yeah. lid would be opened without somebody, like, dispelling it. Yeah. So that made the guards fucking... But, uh, but y'all, you know, Daigon was on the roof. She saw him coming and was able to warn the crew the, the crew inside, Jackson, Kess, to get the fuck out uh, before it's too late. So, you know, it all ended up well. It was great. It was good. You guys got out. It was They stole some rocks, some minerals, some gems. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I mean, this is the thing, right? Brooks definitely thought it was suspicious. <laughs> But he also didn't give a shit because they're pirates. So he was like, yeah, of course it's shady. You know, the... the... Whatever. Yo -ho. And then Kess and, Kess and um, Jax are like, we need to know what's in this box. And Brooks like, I don't give a fuck. What's in the box? Oh, don't care. It's not, as long as it's not like small children. Like a dragon egg. Jax. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if Brooks would really care if it was a dragon egg as long as it was going <laughs> away from the from where he is. Uh, well, he didn't it's, have, it, if it's getting put on the ship, <laughs> that you're also going to be boarding without your knowing. Ooh, you know, yeah, true. I don't know. Brooks, Brooks's whole thing with the dragon I mean, egg. It's is, not like, like Captain Vera against... doesn't have you know has a, she doesn't have access to a dragon egg you know, at all. Brooks's big thing in the dragon egg is I just don't want that shit anywhere fucking near me. That's trouble. Partially because it's a fucking dragon, and partially because that's the sort of shit you get stabbed over. Yeah. You know, yeah. If someone knows that you've got a dragon egg, you're gonna they'd get be, like they'd be valuable. People, you know. Bring the heat. Yeah, exactly. With this shit, he's like, they're a pirate ship. They're doing something illegal. I wouldn't trust them if they weren't doing something dodgy. Man, they didn't really the check fact... the boxes for like false bottoms or anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Brooks said when they were like, it's in there, and they're like, you think we're lying to you? And Brooks is like, no, I fully believe that that's what you saw. I just don't believe that that's what's in there, because you know we'll see. Th there we'll must see. be something, right? No, no self-proclaimed pirate takes a fucking cargo trip where everything on the ship is, as the manifest says, well, and counter is legit. Counterpoints, and... counterpoints. It's stored in like a, a a a guarded by the Blue Sentinels warehouse, so you know what I mean. Like they probably do have illegal stuff. Would, would, they, would they store it they in a it storehouse there. like that? Or would they just go offshore somewhere and pick it up on the way? You know what I mean? Like, that's also a maybe, point you could Maybe make. not. Uh, like, yeah, it's just that mentality of Brooks. Brooks doesn't care that much. Yeah. But he just finds it weird that there's nothing. Like, the fact that there's nothing sketchy is sketchy. Well, but also even, even pirates that they're constantly, like, uh, moving around or offloading in various, like, illicit goods there are still starts starts and ends to those journeys. Like, maybe what if this is in between? They've just gotten rid of the last, like, lot of stuff. They have to go out and get... Like, there has to be a point where they do just have their own legitimate items on yeah. the ship or tend to come on of the course. ship. Like, there's, they're but not going to always have stuff on the top. In his time. mind, you wouldn't check on it. Like, in his mind, it's a pirate ship. They've got to have some illegal shit, and then we're going to have food and rations and shit as well. But in his mind, like, he's never been in a position where he's had to think about, like... You know, it's always been, oh, that'll, that'll sort food out. Like, I might have to cook for me and my brother because he's at work, but there's always shit in the house. Yeah. When when he went and earned a living, he earned fairly good money, enough to put, like, enough to be comfortable enough doing what he was doing. So he's never really had to worry about it. So in his mind, he's like, why would you go and check on 
they're pirates. Why would they go and check on the food, of all things? There's got to be, like, an illusion or a false bottom or the fucking... The bread stuffed with diamonds or... You well, know. but because it's food, it's in a warehouse, rats exist. <laughs> like, things get in yeah, there or, that are also or, just completely or, or normal theft. and logical and... Yeah. No, I fully... Like, out of character, has, has, fully it been, just, has it been discussed, like, in-game how long this ship is going to be to get to where you need to go? Mm. Nope. I don't think it so, might have right? been way back in in my notes like I when we were first talking to her. Mm. Yeah. I don't think there's really been like a specific like, oh, this trip is going like, to take X amount of days. Oh, done. I'm, I think the I'm, only conversation we really you. had was, hey, are you fucking sorting our food for us? Cool. <sighs> Porcupine. I don't okay, we're think... getting there. We're getting pretty close. Tells Jax tells, tells us he met with Vera, Pirate, Ting. Yo ho, uh, a pirate's life for me. Yeah, uh, that we meet, this is, okay, session tw session 22 was where mm. we met her, and we learned about the witch, and stuff. Uh, the, the witch can't bitch. manifest on our islands connected to our cane trident held by dude. Journey of two weeks. She told us it would be two weeks. There you go. Then that would be two Notes. weeks if you left from Eldalon, so take, like, two days Notes off to get the strap more. Yeah, so like, yeah. So, so it's gonna be a long time. Long. To I found that pretty quickly. Those just wrong. flipping through shit. Nice. Look nice. at you taking notes. Good job. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there you go. So it's gonna be a pretty long journey. So I'm excited to just kind of not just have it be super focused on. Well, it's gonna be focused on the task at hand, but it's definitely gonna be some like super piratey like it, Vera, encounters. Vera, <laughs> Vera like mentioned that. that she had positions in mind for us on the crew because we're sort of earning our travel as well while we're there. Yeah, we have to work. Yeah. yeah, which which makes sense to Brooks because he's like, admittedly, we could just turn around and say fuck you because we're doing a job for her to go get some illegal shit. She's just transporting us, right? But then he's like, no, because it makes sense because you want the bare minimum crew because the more people you involve, the more people yeah. might, you know, say something to the wrong person. Exactly. So if you're going to have mercenaries on board, get them doing shit so you can have less sailors. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus, also, also you know, the less, ship will less move faster, less mouths less to feed, and yeah. And, uh. yeah, exactly. And because of the, the the you know the nature of 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 the assignment at hand, also you know the less people that know about. What I'll the be fuck honest. Doing. Brooks is the one person who I think I like. Most people, there's like a role on the position I can really see them fulfilling. And there's like I think Brooks and Diagon, I sort of really sh like. I'm like, what would they? I don't do? know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm like gonna Davian's the navigator, <laughs> right? Like Davian's the navigator. No. Jaxis. That's what oh, he did. No. As, as, that's a joke. I that's could say Davian would be Davian would be like Crow's Nest watch guy because also the biggest range. Like if he he could and he's no, a range I think Kess, attacker. Kess is going in the Crow's Nest, right? Well, that, no, that's what she want to do. Kess but like Vera's like, gonna let Kess do whatever the fuck she wants. Got, got yeah, yeah. yeah. Vera's gonna be like no. Yeah. Jack, like, Jack's on that. I know exactly. I know exactly who's doing what. Map navigation is Jax. One of you is gonna have to clean the fucking deck, guys. I'm just putting that out there. One of the games is gonna be this. You know. Is going to be the fucking floor scrubber. I'm just just I'll throwing do it, it out there. It's gonna, I volunteer. It's gonna, <laughs> one of y'all, one, one, one of the group. You know, just... Brooks will do it. He just won't do it well. <clears throat> I mean, we'll do a really shit job of it, and then she'll be like, "You've done a shit job," and I'm like, "I did my best. I tried really hard." <laughs> like, fuck Dude, this you shit. got we'll some. You got some it. fucking. Uh, oh, what's that? Who, what's that director that really likes his lens flares? I was gonna say because Ethan has this like Michael Bay? perfect no halo Michael Bay's explosions. There's this one guy oh, yeah. that's like really likes his fucking <laughs> lens flares. I don't know. But either way, it's like, for when it, Ethan's face Abrams. perfectly centered in it, and he, it's like Ethan's got the JJ Abrams just, fucking yeah, lens flare angelic. going on, dude. Wait, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not lens flare. I've got God rays. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it looks yeah, like you know, hundred like, percent. Like, like, looks like some fucking movie shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like uh, when you turn RTX on. And you shoot some <laughs> holes into a billboard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and and uh, I'm super excited for this like upcoming arc. I'm so excited! It's gonna, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be. Uh, Part of me wants to like, go. It's, it's exciting ships. because of several things, right? It is exciting because it's kind of Brooks' initiation in, you know, Red Flower Gang Gang. You Red know, it's like gang? his first assignment <laughs> for them. It's, it's like we're not gonna use anyone's out. real names. We have like Saucy Spider Gang instead of their real name. Now we have Red Flower Gang instead of their real name. <laughs> yeah, we're exactly. like, who needs actual If people fighting? have, you know, if if other players have deafened for those parts when they've watched back, if they've watched back, 
Yeah, I, mean, they I know don't the name, know the, shit. The, the, like the name Crimson Lotus has been mentioned in front of everybody, but yeah, 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 but not in character. Yep. Uh, maybe I don't know. Why in front of everyone? I'm pretty. Yeah, it has. Like we haven't elaborated on what they do or anyone's no, 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 no. level of involvement, but the name has been mentioned. The in name is Yappin. My sure. dogs are freaking out. So I gotta. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure that Kess and Daigon have mentioned the name because the group were like, "Where do? Where are you getting all these fucking gifts from?" I mean, when it was that, it was just like we 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 traded favors for favors. It was when we were getting stuff. I thought recently it was kind of mentioned. I don't oh, think well. Brooks has been mentioned in it. I think Brooks has made a solid effort to not be. I swear to God, the session I just uh, that I wasn't there two ago that I caught up on it was because the the dart was at that thing and. Yeah, Dart was at that thing, but Dart didn't. And Dutch, it. Dutch, but Dutch said something that like said it to the group that implied it had. Oh well. Like, are we talking in or out of character? All right. Well, it's kind of both, though, because if Dutch was saying it to the group, then that implies he's saying it because they already... Because Dutch wouldn't, like, out something what, that we characters hadn't outed yet. I, I, no, I, that he specifically, in the session I wasn't there, said that you, me, and Kess would recognize this person, and yeah. I'm pretty sure he named yeah. the, the organization, therefore implying if he named it, the other players, we've obviously I'm pretty sure the, to like, some the degree. name has been mentioned somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Out, and the, out like, of character. The iconography has definitely been seen by everybody. Uh, Everyone yeah, has you, seen when the When you guys logo. did that fucking... When you guys did We're that thing for... We're discussing versus out of character knowledge. Yeah. Oh, like, I think it was, it was because of Strahd, because when we explained why he is even interested in me and Kess, and we explained that we did some work for this group. I don't think we necessarily said, we're like, you know, card-carrying members. We're like, we've worked with them, yeah. and it brought that, his attention that to was, kind of thing. This is what I meant when I said that you and Kess mentioned yeah. it. I just couldn't remember when. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, the long words been seen by everybody when you guys did that thing for the Steed, right? Because it was like, the wars and shit and got fucked, yeah. and like that. Every, everyone's seen the logo. Yeah. I think everyone in character knows that the Kess and Daigon have ties. Yeah. yeah. They don't know the depth of that. And I'm yeah. pretty sure in character, no one outside of the three knows that Brooks has been involved. Yeah. Because yeah. he has made yeah. specific efforts to make up excuses whenever they've ducked out. Yeah, no, it's true, it's true, true. But yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun because it this arc is all about um you know uh, it's 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 a, it's a crimson lotus arc when it comes to like oh yeah. finding dangerous artifacts get it the fuck out uh, but it's also yeah. you know tied to Jax's backstory in the form of oh he's sailing under Captain Vera once more and then you know yeah. there's some reconnecting there and then there's well, also that mentioned it, when I get on the water I'm a criminal again and so then there's also happen. just <laughs> the whole point of you know the elemental shit going on the bitch queen she is one of the bigger Water this little arc threats. really ties in about three or four different mini arcs. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking good shit all around. I'm Plus... terrified from a mechanical perspective because the only other time we oh, had dude. kind of like boat combat or boat encounters, I was playing a druid. I can just become something that can swim and breathe water. Like who gives a fuck? Now I'm like, what the fuck does a monk do if we're fighting like a sea monster on the fucking? I can't do fuck all. <laughs> we catch cannonballs. Dude, I have a stat block for the ship and shit, dude. It's oh, it'll, it'll be great. like the ship will take actions, I guess, and we will yeah. do yeah. things that that boost shit or yeah, yeah. If you know, because I mean, Matt Mercer did a, a handout for ship combat, right? And yeah. I cannot wait to try and do my normal. Laura describes some cool aerial way that she like flips from the one our boat onto attacking boat and then rolling at one, and it's like you you miss and you fall in the ocean. Yeah, so this would be considered a, sa a sailing ship, right? That's what this would be yeah. considered. So yeah. like it shows like how much what the creature capacity is, what the cargo capacity is, how fast it travels, uh, what kind of actions it has, and like weaponry, HP, but also you know. The, the helm has a different AC and HP from the sails and the ballistas and the mangonels yeah. and, and all that shit. It, there's a total sick. HP, and when your total HP is gone, your ship sink. Yeah. But also, there's like, you, you can, can choose to target. You, you can make like cool shots where the AC is higher and like target the sails. Yeah, so like for instance, you, if you're, if you like say like a, another fucking crew of pirates comes around and they're, you know, they're gonna try and take down your sails so they can, they can catch up. So they have like the fucking like chain cannonballs. Yeah, they, it, it's and, not like, like purposely aiming for the sails and the masts and shit the like that. You don't want to sink a ship yeah, unless exactly. you're trying to kill them and not get any loot out of it. So exactly. pirates will either want to damage your ship enough that you surrender, 
Mm -hmm. Because you want to get on their ship as as captives, yeah. So you can than fucking drown. get whatever the fuck is in the hold, which is always like, or you, you want to, yeah, you want to take out the sails. It's why yeah. um, pirates used to load cannonballs with chains around them. Yeah, like the chain because uh, the chain the chains them. would make it. The chains would essentially cut through the fucking uh, cut. mast. It cuts through the mast, yeah, and then the mast would just fucking topple, and then boom. Which is why, as the the decks heavy people, we need throwable shit. Yeah. I'm still waiting to use my dragon arm bands and deflect someone's and, um, spell. I'm still I have waiting. Some, I have some encounters in mind. I have some like stuff that you guys can do when there's no fighting going on on the ship. And I think it's also just, it's going to be a lot of RP. It's going to be a lot of like yapping, getting to know people. Yeah. Um, you know, there'll be somebody there that, you know, maybe might be able to tell you some more about the bitch queen and, and all that shit and, and, and the trident. And because every pirate crew has that one guy that's like, <laughs> yeah, he knows. You know what I mean? You don't know how, but he knows. <laughs> just no shit. I, it's yeah, like, um, I mean, there's so many fun things that you we know, can do. Yeah, it's like part of the Caribbean. Sure. They have fucking Gibbs who just knows everything about everything that they face. He's so like, the oh, lord. I've read this shit in the fucking, I've heard this shit in a poem. Or, you know what I mean? Like, there's, always, there's, always, there's always that guy that just somehow dude, the, knows like, exactly old, old what's going on. Salty sea dog that's been on the seas for 60 years. And realistically, can't fucking hold his own in a fight anymore. But everyone keeps him because he knows. Because he has shit. valuable information stored in his fucking yeah. noggin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's gonna be some, you know, some some exposition cast on all of you, and you know what exactly it is you're dealing with, and shit like that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time. Um, very, very good time. Uh, quickly whip out Discord on my phone because we have some questions submitted by some people. Uh, Sassy has a couple of questions. First one is for me. Oh, I saw these. Do you have a food list of things that's common in certain areas of the, in the world? Uh, yes and no. Because I have a rough idea of what, like, the, the, the you know, the different tribes of people and races that live throughout the, 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 the new continent eat and what they do to survive. Uh, because they're not settled. As far as, like, the settled land goes, so, like, the fucking uh, Fairbrush Footing and um, uh, Keldar, because those are the only two provinces that have been settled uh, properly by both the kingdoms and the empire. Um, you know, obviously, the cities that are coastal have a lot of fish and that sort of thing, because it's right, the fucking ocean's right there. Uh, as far as, like, more land inward goes, uh, there's a lot of, like, there's a trade company for a reason, so a lot of the shit that gets, you know, a lot of the fish does make it to other cities, but, you know, not as fresh, and they'll have to be, you know, cured, or whatever the fuck, you know, stashed in a fucking, like, a barrel of salt, you know what I mean, to, like, cure it so that it lasts, so, like, if you want good fresh fish, the coastal places is where you need to be, or else you're kind of shit out of luck, uh, but... As far as, like, places like, uh, New Daramuth, that's a pretty far, like, land inward, you know, they have a lot, they, well, they had <laughs> a lot of farmland around it until some fucking Yikes. group of cultists decided to start burning shit down. Uh, and cattle and livestock and that sort of thing. So I have a rough idea. Like, there's no, like, I don't really have it to a T of, like, oh, this particular dish is only available in this particular, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not that deep. But, um, uh, as far as, like, I have a rough idea of, like, what is available where, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, to Laura and Ethan, if you had to describe each other's characters as a food dish, what would it be and why? And no, cat food I've, is not allowed. I've, to I've totally got this, okay? Go so, go Brooks on, would on. be one of those, like, gastropub burgers that looks, like, more pretentious than it is. And every, <laughs> every, at every level, like, the burger, where they can, has been infused with a different kind of alcoholic. There's a whiskey, bacon, jam on the patty. There's, like, the cheese is, like, a, a, like, beer-infused cheddar cheese and stuff okay, like that. Jack Daniels and, glaze. Yeah, and one of the, and the, there's Jack Daniels and the I mean, barbecue, sauce, barbecue sauce on the patty. Lit, dude, to be and fair. then the they bun is, like, shit. one of those pretzel buns that made to look, like, looks with the X on the top. But at the end of the day, it's still, like, it's a burger. It's something everybody, you know, Yo, everybody Pretzel buns kind of go hard, though, dude. Like Real some, talk. Pretzel buns go hard. Because the alcohol is obvious with the drunken master and Brooks so infusing the alcohol into the layers. But again, and Brooks is like, he likes his nice clothes. So the burger trying to look fancy, but also at the end of the day, he's still like, he's the kind of person where like almost everyone knows someone like that. And also it's like, he's, he, he's more 
uh, caring than he lets on, and he does when he when he tries. He can be very like comforting, and he's good to talk to, and like good to chill with, and get like a pint with. So gastro pub. Yeah, and he's also, and he's also not, not scary to like get his hands dirty, which I guess also falls in line. Because yeah, if, if you have a good eating. burger, it's gonna get fucking sloppy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah no, sure. yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. I I fully agree with that. <laughs> Look, that see, Laura's is really logical. Uh huh. And my answer for Daigon has no logic in it. It's just gut feel. Right? Hold on. Daigon is a creme brulee. I will not be elaborating further on this. But it makes layer. sense. The more you think about yeah, it. Yeah, mushy, mushy, soft, squishy inside. Hard with exterior, the, the hard exterior. Soft, squishy. Yeah, I guess. I guess. It, that it wasn't, feels a bit like, fancy. There was, there was... Dagen, also, both of them don't talk. Crazily not. <laughs> they can't talk either, guys. So, like... Well, the other thing about it is, like, if you notice, because I've been keeping track, she is like, she rates all the drinks that Brooks buys, but she likes, she likes anything that's sweeter and less bitter, because cats generally, like, I've based off of cats, in theory, have a much more sensitive, bitter taste receptors, and cats liking, like, milk or cream, like, so any drink that is, like, kind of heavier, has, like, cream or dairy in it, was on the sweeter side, or the drinks she's rated higher, so a dessert would make sense, I guess. A dessert. Okay, okay, okay. I fuck well, with it. See, you've both put like a heavy amount of thought to it. I literally was just sat there and I was like, there you go. Creme brulee, there fun. There you go. Creme brulee. <laughs> no thoughts, just vibes. Dav Davian <laughs> is uh, Hunter's Chicken because it's funny. Mm. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Tess is one of those fucking. Pretentious, the really, uh, the pretentious, she's one of those pretentious, pretentious places where that comes with that airy shell. You have to crack a blown sugar and like spun oh, things, no, and then there's lots was... of like air in the dessert. That's like not actually much substance, but then the bit that is there is like really weird flavors that you never would put together. It's like that things that are unexpected, like some dessert that's like lime and like elderflower, like something weird. Like this doesn't sound Elder like beige. it should taste good, and then it does. Like <laughs> my my thought was similar to Laura's, but a bit and more colorful. Intensive. Something colorful. Mine was like one of those Heston Blumenthal like TV shows you watch where he's like, I've got like, it looks like a plate of grass, but the Which grass is. is made from like fucking mint stems and it comes yeah. in a jar and the jar's got fucking vapors of like caramel where we've just turned <laughs> it into a fucking vape and blown it in and that'll yeah. do. Yeah, and then a Lazarin is just like some fancy like the like Wagyu Kobe steak, like something really obnoxiously expensive. He's caviar. Yeah, or yeah, so one of the classic like rich people stereotypes. Oh, dude, foods. you know what the like the mo like, this is kind of brings me like you know what like the most fancy like preten pretentious thing is, is I've ever done in a restaurant. What? Is they they bring you like this special like powdered chocolate which like infused with a bunch of fucking whatever you know spices and whatever the fuck, but it's meant to be snorted, so you have to like <laughs> you have to sniff it. What? Oh no, I hate that idea because I <laughs> oh I hate everything about that. Oh. You have to I sniff it and like, and I it's crazy because I did it, right? And why? Dude, you oh. taste it and it's so weird, but it's like, it's, oh. it was kind of nice and it was, it <laughs> yeah, because, because 80% of, of taste is smell. It's the yeah, same idea still, as th that's the idea behind it. You can get water bottles where they uh, essentially you put shit in the top and it scents, it, it releases a scent as you drink yeah, from yeah. it, but you're not actually drinking anything flavored, you're just drinking water. Yep. But because you can smell fucking cherries, it tastes like cherries. Yeah, so it's basically, you can buy one of these things for yourself for like 45 euros. You get like a little device with two tins of uh, of cocoa powder with like whatever fucking flavors. But yeah, it's the literally device, the, the thought process behind it is, is exactly that. It is like 80% uh, of, of, of our taste experience of food comes from the nose. Yeah. So that's the idea, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And they work together with like this like proper like chocolates here to like develop this yeah. and, 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 t and test it. And if now... you snorted that while eating something like bacon, would it taste chocolatey? No idea. I think the cocoa that I like, that, we, that we had trip. was like some like ginger infused cocoa powder. It was kind of, Ooh, kind of wild. I hate ginger. I hate ginger I love so it. much. I love like, it. Like, Jax would, would, would be would gingerbread again? cookies. Would I do it again? Probably no, not. No, no, I was going to Jax has to be seafood of some kind. Being a pirate, Only if things go really, dish. really poorly on this trip. Shatter says, uh -huh. from snorting lines in a dodgy toilet to snorting food in a restaurant, what a world to be alive in, true, bro. <laughs> no, but like genuinely, that, like that is a thing, uh, and I've done it, okay. and it's, it's kind of cool. It's like, yeah. I know it's really yeah, off you know. topic, Thank but you. I've just had the idea. Yeah. Like in our in our universe, we have like stupid like gastronomy where like you get to that upper echelon, and and people are like, yeah, what weird shit can I do with food, carafe, right? Yeah. Right. Which is yeah. 
That is the that is how that, far that is... does that go in like in D and D worlds? Like, is there somewhere where there's mages that are like using thaumaturgy cantrips mm -hmm. to like see if they can make like scented fucking vapor? And... Yeah, or also like instead of right, instead of it actually being like. You know, if you because like the like the gastro or whatever the fuck is always like very tiny portions and shit, right? Yeah. So instead of them making very tiny, you know, things, it's just they make a normal one, have a mage shrink it, and then they serve it. You know what I mean? Shit like that. <laughs> like, yeah, because, we're, we're literally <laughs> like you're paying mage, to have like, someone like make your big food ass, into big ass apple pie, and instead of them just baking like yeah. the smaller ones, like the smaller, they just like bake a big one, mage cast, shrink or enlarge. Well, because most it. fancy oh, food go. in our world, that, like that <laughs> level, it's like molecular gastronomy. It's like they're yeah. using science to like change the states of food and do weird shit, yeah, and then science is just magic it. that humans have explained, right? So yeah, it would just yeah, be D&D version is just magically doing stuff to food. Yeah. Trying to think, like, what other weird shit could you do with magic in, like, fucking... Although, dilemma. Imagine someone, they do that, they're making massive meals and then shrinking them so people can feel better. Like, I only ate a little bit, but it's still all the same calories because it yeah. was originally one size. So it's like, you think you're not eating yeah, a lot, but you're actually start gaining weight, and you're like, no, what the that's hell? The magic about it. Because how many times you go to, you know, I've never been, but, like, you always hear people like, oh, still, I'm not full. I could go to the fucking chippy and fucking, you know, when you when they've had, like, ten courses at a fucking fuck-off restaurant. Those people are That problem doesn't okay. exist in D&D &D land, because magic, baby, you're okay. still full as if you ate a whole apple yeah. pie. It's just been shrinking. Fucking Goodberry. It's just made you made it made it it's made easier for you. <laughs> like that's all it is. To, to the other extent, then <laughs> could in theory if you had a really high magic setting, you could basically eradicate poverty. Yeah, but why would because they? you could just enlarge things? You you know, you the poor people live off like yeah. a slice of bread and a singular piece of, of sweet corn because it's enlarged to the size of the fucking family dinner table. True. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I really Why don't they see, do that, I guys? Go. I want to Why go. does poverty exist in D&D? &D? Because, because it tells we good model stories. it off of the real world. It, it tells and... great stories. <laughs> okay, all well, I want to... If, if, the, if the fucking um, slums outside Strathmore would not be poor, people like Fat Pate would not be able to rule it with fear I, I mean, and, and that sort I, I of should, thing. I because should, they have nothing I to fear for. clarify. <laughs> We're eliminating food poverty, not financial poverty. Yeah, yeah because yeah, magic true. would further extend. So you're eliminating the food between... scarcity. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. yeah. So no, people because... could still be poor. They just won't hungry. be hungry. They you, won't have you can make as much. Not yeah, no world hunger because food's free <laughs> because you can make whatever you want. But there is now a bigger divide between rich and poor. Yeah, like you're solving one problem, but by that there's still like you know there's still bigger fucking problems, the yeah. group of. 10 urchins that don't have a roof over the head, but at least they're fed. Smile. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that. I mean, like, oh. I really Silver want lining, I guess. Just you know somewhere mean? in the universe of Dungeon Select, I want one restaurant where there's just like fucking enlarged foods. But enlarged not like to foods? ridiculous extremes. No, that's the, like, kind of shit, want... that's the kind of shit you'd see at a state fair, bro. Yeah. But like, be like, like oh, that sort the, of shit. Fucking, uh, the empire. I want to go. The empire's biggest sausage on a stick. You know, shit like that. Brooks <laughs> is gonna set up a street car, and he's gonna be like, these are. He's gonna go to a really rich area of a city, set up a street car with a fake food vendor's license. He's gonna be like, no, these aren't. These aren't normal carrots. These are baby carrots that have been magically expanded. And they're just normal carrots. And they're oh, just normal dickhead. carrots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Fucking hell. Just imagine oh, an orc salt bay slapping meat and sprinkling salt for the rich elves and stuff. Dude, that's fucking funny. I mean, Holy I, fuck. I hate to say it, but yeah, I mean... Isn't salt bay kind of a dickhead, though? Isn't, isn't he kind of a... Apparently his restaurants are pretty shit. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently it's not I really worth like... the hype. Because of magic the showmanship of food would get so much more like why why have a waiter bring your customers food over when you can teleport you can it literally to or fucking them. float it over on like a cloud or some shit yeah. dude like whatever the fuck you know why fucking have a window because in some restaurants you have like a like an open kitchen so people can watch and cook yeah why do that when you can have like fucking astral projections of of them cooking like set in the table and that's shit. An you know what that's i mean that's an expensive like, spell to cast bro <laughs> yeah i know like i'm this is like the fucking the food prices are that expensive not because the food is hard to get it's just the way they're cooking it is way too expensive for the, for the restaurant to afford which is why they still have to charge people like 200 gold for a fucking steak <laughs> It's fucking, we, Fuck. we don't cook this steak on a grill, <coughs> we fucking, we plane shift it to the plane of fire for about 
three oh, minutes yeah, either side. Yeah, they can do shit like, oh, this is fake chicken. Call it this morning myself. Cost me two plane shift spells to get it, though, but it's going to be fucking worth it. Yeah, fuck off. It tastes like chicken. <laughs> it tastes like chicken. Um, right, anyway. Or from um, fake salmon, which tastes like tuna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, how do we get it to the food related? Oh, because that's question was food related. That's, that's, that's how we got to the food related the rants. Right. Um, Shatter had a question. Uh, new guest means new character. What was your character's first impression of Kai? You want to go first or you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Cool. I mean, I thought he was cool. Like, obviously, out of character, I've discussed why. Just from a character building perspective, I think it's dope. And Druids are my favorite class. So I'm just like, yes. Um, in character... Uh, I, I think it's more now that the more the like Daigon is able to form connections with people that aren't Kess and realize, okay, maybe I'm getting better at this thing. But then also hearing, um, like during the episode where I wasn't there, but they gave Brooks the thoughts and prayers drink. One of his thoughts was like, I can cut and run from this group if I need to. And there's been whenever there is conflict, it's the reminder of, okay. Yeah, and then like Kess's constant lying and not like trivial lies, but like big lies and things like that. There's always a reminders that are being like, hey, while this is great and this is something you haven't had, it's like you're being able to finally able to form relationships. It's still tenuous and it's still a chance that this could end at any moment. So it's almost like in the naive way, she's still trying to make connections where when and where she can as long as they don't seem outright like you seem like a horrible person or you're gonna get me like mm -hmm. no one can really get me in more trouble than the people i'm currently with if i'm being honest so uh she was like i'll go talk to this guy and again because i had to i'm very proud of my big brain idea with the thoughts and prayers yeah, i want to get into i want to get into that uh, speech impediment. i want to get into that after, um, after we, we deal with the questions that was yeah. a really interesting, a really interesting and thing. he seemed cool and again he didn't seem too weirded out by it he didn't react weird about the hairlessness and stuff and there's a chance that he also maybe knows about the crimson lotus given vera's connection so maybe it's also one less thing one person i wouldn't have to hide that from etc all those i was like we're gonna be in a boat with this guy so let's get to know him and see what he's about but then i also didn't think about till later i was like hmm, the first person ever to hear what Dagon's voice would have sounded like was not a party member. <laughs> it was him. Yeah, I mean, and I'm like, that's kind of crazy. The situation, oh, the situation just kind of arose. Right? I mean, it's... Yeah. Um, but no, I think he seems uh, very, very genuine so far. Because even like that whole thing with the not telling us what's in the crates and it's nothing sketchy. And it didn't even... I don't get the vibe he was hiding. It's just like to him, it doesn't seem no, like, it's a like a big it's a deal of that interesting. It's a thing. It's yeah, like, he just, it's like he crew, just genuinely... None, none, none of their business, you know what I mean? Well, that and he genuinely couldn't see. It's like, why would you care so much? Like, it's not gonna bother you. Like, you're just you're you're passengers. Like, you're not you're earning your keep while you're there, but you're not still part of our like crew crew yet. So it's just yeah. none of your business, but not in a malicious way. No, just and, uh, that's like I when you. Know. It's like when you're you know. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example. You're like you're at the grocery store and you can see that uh, one of the like shelf stalkers has like a fucking pallet full of like boxes with them and you're like oh what's, what's in that box what's in that box none of your fucking business you know yeah I mean? exactly fuck off so why not <clears throat> like, why, do you, why do you care what's in these boxes the, the perfect example you know I mean? the perfect example i get a text from someone i work with because the rotor's just gone up for a couple of weeks from now and i've got some time booked off mm -hmm. and they're like hey what are you getting up to in that time you've booked off None of your fucking business, None of your, business, your fucking bro. business. I'm not yeah. doing anything illegitimate. I'm like, I've not I'm, got I'm any gonna, grand I'm, plans. I'm jerking off and sleeping in, bro. You. What's it to you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck off. Yeah, because it could be something like, I just need a <laughs> mental health break or I'm busy, or it could be something very personal, like medical reasons or family. It's like, it's none of your business. Just back off. I need it, it, wags. We don't know what you like that, There bro. might have been nothing important in the boxes. He didn't want to tell us because it's nothing to do with us. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah, that's yeah. actually it. <laughs> and it's funny. Uh, so yeah, because we're because idiots. of the fact that the part ah, idiots, yes, but also I feel like it's just any D and D party has that innate built-in like I wouldn't want to call it box. paranoia, but suspicion. Well, like, I think I don't think the they more do. Shit, there's more shit you I don't go think through. Every yeah, no, but I just does. feel like in general D and D, yeah. it's like the more um, the more shit your party has gone through, the more just like naturally suspicious well you get. Born. You know what I mean? Of shit, I, of, I of think things. There must be a. There's a certain level of some of subconscious meta to it, where yeah. it's a game. Why was it yeah. mentioned if it's not important, right? Yeah, it's the yeah, same I'll as be, yeah. DM describes a door 
door must be a trap because DM described this door more than the last door. Yeah. And but I'm just like, I, I mean, in character, we're, we're all pretty, yeah. just very like chaotic, very. Yeah. Oh, yeah. None of the, we all have trust issues. Oh, yeah. Um, most of us don't have very much regard for the law. Oh, no. We follow the laws enough to not get shot on sight, and that's about it. Mm. Sometimes. Mostly. Mostly. Asterisk, most of um, us. <laughs> so what was Brooks' yeah. first impression yeah, of, uh, of Kai? I mean... Daigon's... I, I love the fact... Daigon's like, we're going to be on a ship for ages with this guy. Let's, you know, make effort. Whereas Brooks, in his mind, is just like, the guy that we're going to be on a ship on. Don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Brooks is very, like... He sort of doesn't feel like... Because he, you know, they have that in with the captain. He doesn't feel like he needs to cozy up to anyone else on the crew. Which, mm -hmm. you know, is absolutely ego and is probably very incorrect. But in his mind, he's just like... You know, it might be a bit different if... If he wasn't involved in that, he might be very much like, Okay, I need to get everyone on my side in case, you know, it, it becomes yeah. beneficial. Whereas with this, he's sort of like, eh, you know, he's just some guy that's working for I someone feel like I know. That's a, that's a very hard line as well. To, to like, it's a, hard, it's a hard line to walk well. Because you want to remain, like how Koiba did it, for instance. Uh, I thought was like a very, like, well done, true to the character, but not outright. Because like, Alasrin didn't want nothing to do with Kai. Like, no, this is a day off. We'll talk to you tomorrow, whatever. Which yeah. absolutely suits Alasrin's vibe and and the way and especially given the shit that the last in particular has been has been through recently and also mm -hmm. has learned about his like family recently he's like dude i don't care right now man we'll talk to you tomorrow like i totally you know that made sense to me yeah. but it's very hard to not overdo that to the point where like you know at the end of the day there's a guest character let them play yeah which it, I, yeah. I, thought thing Koiba, of like... I thought koiba you know like managed to to walk that line pretty well of like being true to how a Lazarin would act without actively being like, no, OSG, fuck off. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's that thing of like, if this was an NPC, we might have just told him to do one. We've got no interest. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. It's, that, it, it's that thing of sometimes you have to curb. Like, I nobody likes to talk about it because everyone likes this idea that everyone's 100% true to their characters all the time. But at the end of the day, it is a collaborative storytelling game. Right, and yeah. sometimes you yeah. have to go against sometimes what you, you think have your to character like, would do. Sometimes you have to just kind of like tone down yeah. the in characterness a little bit for the sake of the game. Yeah. To, you know, there, like, there, are, there are times where what your character would do is counterintuitive. There are situations or sometimes where even might have left the group. There are situations yeah. where Brooks has been like, like in my head, I'm like, Brooks would probably just like be like, fuck this and walk out or punch someone. And I'm like, you, like there have been times where I'm like, I could kick up and start a bar fight right now, and that would be really fun, but these other two characters have something really important to do, and I don't mm -hmm. want to take up a bunch of session time just having a punch-up. Yeah. You know, like, it, I mean, it's dude, a collaborative... The, speaking of punch-ups, bro, I mean, there's going to be a lot of that on the Porcupine, bro, because remember, oh, Porcupine, yeah. no, this Porcupine, is, Porcupine is the ship that did the fight club, so they don't, there's going to be... The Brooks is the there's champion gonna some, There's going to be some, you know, you're going to be on, this, on the fucking sea for two how weeks. Much, how much to be bad? The first thing they're going to push for is a rematch between Brooks and Dagon. Ugh, no. Oh, wow. so there's definitely gonna be uh, gonna be some okay. tussling, dude. Don't worry. So Bro Brooks will get it. Brooks because will get of his, your shitty uh, roles or violence. Brooks will get that senseless violence feel uh, very soon. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> See, on my li on Brooks's to do list for a long time has been spy with Dagon, talk about things that that maybe Dagon could do differently. Mm -hmm. Ask Dagon question about this that I think I would actually benefit from learning. This sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because oh, fuck. to Brooks, Diagon's like a really interesting fighter because she's much more disciplined and Di Diagon is the person that like Brooks imagines getting up at five in the morning to practice martial arts positions on a fucking <laughs> karate kid style on a on a pier somewhere. Yeah, yeah which one of you is Jackie Chan though? <laughs> What, and which one's the karate? And which one's and which uh, one is the karate Jayden? kid? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> both if, if, in I different feel like ways. If, it, if it's monk shit, if Dagen it's monk would be shit. teaching. Da Brooks, but, if it's, but if it's more just like to... if it's more just like fucking street fighting, that's when Brooks would be teaching I really, Dagen, so I feel like you know what I mean. My hope is that there will be time for 
Brooks too asked Diagram some questions about the more spiritual side of monk shit. Like things like Stunning Strike. I don't have Brooks use Stunning Strike ever. Mm -hmm. And that's not because his DC is not great. It's because mechanically to me... You don't have access to it because Stunning Strike's a fifth level and you're a multi-class. You don't have access to okay. it. Okay. Well, in which case I'm not going it. to have Brooks do Stunning Strike ever. <laughs> I, I spoke to Dutch about this like when we first talked about yeah. two monks. I was like, yeah. Brooks isn't a strunning strike monk, and he never will be. No. Well, I'm still going to use it sparingly, and it's a bit meta, but I've justified it in character, because also a few times Digan's tried to use it, I've had more... Un like, I've had mo more times I've failed than times I've succeeded at using stunning yeah. strike. So in her mind, it's not a go-to tactic right now, because she's still figuring out how to do it. And like in character, it's a, I'm still practicing, I'm not going to waste my energy doing this thing on high stakes fights because I'm not good at it and I'll do the things I know that I'm at least like higher odds of success. Mm -hmm. But like maybe in a casual spar, that's ironically where she'd use setting strike and not a boss fight because my D and out of characters, my DC is really low. My wisdom's not great. It's only a 13 save. So that's that's relatively easy depending on who it's, it is. Yeah. So. Um, I, I would really like to have time for Brooks to ask Daigun about the more like spiritual side of being a monk because he really doesn't get it or understand it mm. but then i also think that like when it comes to brute bare knuckle fighting he's willing to be much more of a shady character than she is even though she kicked him Brooks in the, is the kind of guy to fucking smuggle like brass knuckles into a boxing glove that sort of shit dude yeah. he he has a really fucked up like twisted code of morality which is he doesn't it just how does he feel on the day if he was fighting someone like Dagon, he wouldn't but he would stoop low enough to like grappling right yeah. which in a proper boxing match is like absolutely big no mm -hmm. but he's like in in brooks's mind he his big worry is that someone bigger than him is gonna grapple Dagon and beat the shit out of her mm -hmm. so he's like <clears throat> I I want to show her how to get out of that. Yeah, and that's gonna because... be cool. And like, it's too just being being kind of confined to a pirate ship with limited space. That is the perfect opportunity to There's do stuff so like many... that. You know what I mean? Pirate um, ship. Hat, real great. quick though, before we move on to that one, and I, Abby also asked a question in chat that I want to go over. Uh, Chatter's question was a two part one. Oh. Um, did the impression of the impression your characters had of Kai change after teaming up together and getting a taste of his? combat capabilities uh yeah. after, you know when, when going to save that artificer together for me not at all it's still uh because all the impressions were less about like his <clears throat> utility or what he can do or right and just about the context of meeting him we're going to be spending time together uh both like Daigon wants to just practice trying to connect with people even though <laughs> it's really hard for her and in form relationships oh. but also the other thing is He's another like animal humanoid race, so True. they also have that connection because she's the only one not in the party. Conventionally attractive. Yeah, and he's all yeah. Also, <laughs> also sticks out like a sore thumb in a group. Yeah, not conventionally attractive. Like he's massive. Yeah, he he's a turtle. He has stuff growing all over him. So like there's the there's some that, like, common ground there. So that we like, have this what... group of people who all stick out in really weird ways. Yeah, which makes Dagon finally <laughs> not. But it's one out. of those Everybody the thing about anyone with like way, body yeah. body issues like comes it's like even if you're surrounded by other people who maybe also it's like you yeah, you're always absolutely. gonna be hyper focused be... on your insecurities and what makes you stick yeah, at yeah, what you yeah. were raised against like like there's <clears> not a bunch of other tabaxi here so maybe for all people know maybe this is how they normally look but that's not the way I'm thinking about it it's so deeply internalized that yeah, no, like yeah, your whole life sure, sure. so you're not gonna think about it that way that mm -hmm. these other people don't uh, like make that help help you blend more kind of thing so. But, you know, the Artificer Tower didn't change. It was pretty much exact same opinions. The, the, where Most of the opinions of Kai were formed during their bar chat and did not change post, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Brooks? Any, any, anything mm. about Brooks's? Shadow didn't really put out the the big power dick of I can <laughs> do I, cool druid shit. Like, he was very... No wild shaping happened. Yeah, no <laughs> wild shaping, no, like... Because I think... Brooks sits on, on two sides on mm -hmm. magic. Some magic he looks at and is like, it's fucking point of that, I could just punch you in the face. <laughs> and then some magic he looks at and is like, I don't understand that, and that terrifies me. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, 
some of the magic the group do is like like eldritch blast yeah that really looks like it hurts but if i get close enough to to one of our casters they're fucked yeah you squishy mm -hmm. <laughs> but then yeah. other things they do he looks at and he's like like kess that's a scary shadow lady not just that but kess like <laughs> using like spells that change people's perceptions or allegiances he's like no 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 that's fucked <laughs> so he hasn't really seen anything from from kai that's made him turn around and be like okay you have powers that i don't understand and that terrifies me in his mind he's I mean, just dude he summoned a big ass fucking tidal wave that's pretty cool he did and brooks was like cool keep my cap of water bleeding on me Sorry? Oh, it's true. Yeah, you do, Keep you my do. cap of water breathing on me, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but as far as perceptions go, okay, I guess I guess not not much change there because um, and it's also like still like first impressions wise, I feel like uh, due to the like erratic um, shit the party has gone through very recently, not everybody was as excited to like oh something new. Hi, hey, let's be overly friendly. Wham! My my shit's fucking blurry as fuck. Because of um, the darkness, so now Discord's like, the we darkness can't tell can't where your darkness. faces. Yeah. Hold on. Are you any fun back on set up already? Um, yes. Huh? I was looking to see if I have any fun background set up for next week. Um, I had a couple in mind. So, yeah. I think it's. I, I'm excited to, to, to like. Being on a ship, having limited people to talk to is naturally going to make it so that Kai gets to show off more, talk more, and, and get to know everybody more, and, and vice versa. That's going to be fun. Um, Abby asked the question. Uh, I guess this is for all three of us, and we'll all three kind of like do our do our thing. Uh, what are you most excited for during the whole pirating section and anything you're hoping you'll get to do? We already kind of started talking about that with the whole uh, teach me, t teaching Daigon stuff yeah. and that but anything else that any of you are like really hope that this is something i get to do i, I have a list so do you oh want to go first laura yeah because mine will be short because honestly um like in character daigon not so much looking forward to it because water not really her home turf doesn't really like it not like afraid of it mm -hmm. but just knows like i'm very hampered here and i can't get away like if it comes to fight or flight flight is not a choice and stuff like that. Like, not really keen about it, per se. Um, not particularly. But, and, and also then from a combat perspective, it's also like, how useful can I be depending on what threats we face? So, uh, in character, she's not really too excited other than now she has, she has this new way she can maybe talk to people and maybe it could be some bonding time, but also that resource is limited. It costs money. It's not going to be easily acquired. So she also kind of wants to hold on to that for like, emergencies or really important conversations I mean, or things like that so you have somebody that's learning how to brew things you could ask for the recipe Ooh, yeah. yeah and have brooks but make it for you moment so it's yeah. something that yeah, no, she like wants to be line, careful she's like, also line. it's alcoholic so she also can't just be like yeah, i'm gonna I saw, have a day i saw the little twitter conversation, to to little twitter conversation and then uh, you had about <laughs> is this like is this like the beginning of daigon's descent into alcohol <laughs> i mean it is entirely <laughs> possible that with enough help from Jax. Or someone with high intelligence that Brooks could find a non-alcoholic way of making it. Yeah, true. True, true, true. But it would probably require a It'll lot of But your virgin time. thoughts and prayers. <laughs> virgin thoughts and prayers is going to be my next band name. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> for me, I'll go first because Ethan said he had a fucking bucket list. <laughs> I'm very excited for the party to just kind of have some time to talk and really just like because there's a lot of like shit going on for each character like individually that they're kind of dealing with and i really hope that this is one of those times where the party is like fuck it dude i'm just gonna I'm just gonna involve other people in my shit mm -hmm. and just you know what i mean like that and really kind of evolve that that, that 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 bond uh, yeah and be healthy and talk about your shit um but also there's just because the bitch, I've said bitch queen because that's like an official nickname for her so much that I forgot her actual name. <laughs> uh, no, like um, Umberly, 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 right? But it's so yeah, like a lot of rooted are. in canon five E lore, and it is like especially for seafarers and pirates, she is a nightmare. Like she is 
like their biggest fear like people worship her out of fear and like she is so like rooted in core 5e lore it's gonna be really cool to kind of just zoom in and and ex do some exposition on like a canon 5e because we in, in in yeah campaign one we've had some canon 5e baddies show up uh you know orcas for example and and then shit like that um so it's, i always really enjoy kind of like i really like writing up my own bad guys and shit and have done that and will continue to do that but i also really enjoy as sort of like just paying homage to the mm -hmm. all phenomenal writing that was the coast have been doing for I'm some, excited of, this, to some see of their more bad of guys are so fucking cool dude uh, to just kind of yeah. give 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 some canon D and D stuff a, a, a place in this world, you know what I mean? Like I, I, this world has never been fully homebrewed. It's always been canon five e. Sometimes I rewrite some characters or make them more important or less important than they originally were. You know, throw a little gender bend in there here or there, but shit like that. But like at its core, um, I will say that's it. I'm excited to out of character excited to meet her probably the most thing i'm most excited for in pirate arc is meeting her potentially or exploring her ties to the world as a villain because she was heavily linked to a character i almost played in this campaign so it'd be cool there you go. to there you go. learn some more um so yeah that's gonna be i i love villains guys so i really love <laughs> whenever i have a chance to, like, he's a bad man to, i literally to, like, have a keychain that says villains do it better on my car yeah, keys, there you go. so i feel you <laughs> so like i just really enjoy um showcasing like a core 5e villain that that some of you some of the cast will, will know stuff about and be like oh fuck you know that is also a fun reaction to have for instance when we first name drop orcus to see some of the party members go or some of the cast members go, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. also fun sometimes. Um, so I really, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, the exposition on who is Umberly, what makes her tick, what drives her, and what can she do if you cross her. Um, <clears throat> very cool. Very excited for that in particular. Love me a good villain. <laughs> We're all right, Ethan. What's this list? Uh, okay it's not like a list in a sense of like i have a pre-prepared list i just have a bunch of shit in my head that i'm like hee hee pirate shit cool um rooks bought fishing rods he did oh because yeah? he wants to make a specific effort to get more involved with davian because other than that like, fishing is kind of hunting right so it's a form yeah of hunting, i mean right? he figures that the davian would be the person to fish and he's like and and maybe Jax as well, but like he really wants some one-on-one. Owen was gonna fucking Davian. thrive, dude. Owen was gonna just like fly low yeah. over the water, open his fucking beak, and just because they have like, they, than, they don't have pe they don't have pelican beaks, but they are they, they have got big ass fucking. There's a lot of real estate in the, in those beaks for shit. So. Yeah, they're like the long and yeah. And I'm pretty sure like naturally IRL uh, uh, fucking shugo storks do that as well. Like they. Their, their their diet is very fish based. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they just tend to do it in I think still water, but yeah. But I'm sure Ono will figure it out, seeing as he's sentient. Yeah, exactly. I mean, animals are sentient, but I know what you mean. Okay, not, <laughs> no, I know what sentient you mean. Sentient, not the right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, has a capable intellect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, other than the sat on top of the fucking tavern vision thing. Brooks and Davian haven't really hung out ever. True. They're just Davian's very sort of. I don't want to do the social shit. Leave me alone. I don't want to. Whereas Brooks thrives in a crowd of people because he feels like he he feels like he's sort of. I'm not going to go too into detail with it because it's. Uh, I've got yeah. I mean, other if there's if there's shit that you want to like keep a keep a surprise, and by all means, right. Brooks, Brooks is more comfortable when he's being that extroverted in a group, like performer almost. So and he's definitely, never really made there's the going to be a crew of like twenty odd pirates around you as well at all times. Yeah. So there's definitely you know I'm excited for fighting shit. I'm excited to have. We're all co cooped up in a very small space. There's nowhere that anyone can really run off to and sulk, and you know that's mm -hmm. going to breed serious character discussion but it's also going to breed yeah. you know downtime there's going to be time between shit so like brooks wants to seriously sit down and like properly with dagon's help study his fucking book 
and hopefully learn like I don't know, like twenty more words, or as much as he fucking can, given that yeah, he's not a true. great learner. Yeah, some more sign language. Very true. Very true. You know, he wants to start learning more. <laughs> the whole point of doing it was to. The whole point of why he got the book is so that he didn't need to harass Dagon to do it. Mm -hmm. But he also figures that it will go quicker with Dagon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, fuck yeah. Oh, you got more? Oh yeah. <laughs> ship, ship combat. Ship combat excited for. Ship combat always yes. a good time. Uh, it's gonna be some good we fucking need, like proper I, I pirate will, ship, ship. I will ship. bribe you on payday for us to find a merchant ship somewhere on the way back potentially when we've already done shit and we have spare time, so that Brooks and fucking Dagon can go overboard and fucking jump on there and start breaking shit. Um, what makes you think Dagon would do that? <laughs> I was gonna say hello, lawful character. <laughs> There why are no laws on merchants? the sea. There are. There are. And there's that's a reason Jax is a wanted man. Yeah, there's, there's a whole. That, yeah, but that's not what Brooks is going to say, isn't it? He's going to be like, there's no laws on the sea. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. We're on a pirate ship. The we only way them. that goes without there being any repercussions is everybody fucking dies. No witnesses. <laughs> Skies is. We're going to paint the name of the ship. We're going to do a fucking. Um, oh, what's the name of the movie with Nicolas Cage when he's the gun dealer we're gonna fucking Lord lower Lord. down a... yes good movie we're gonna underrated movie by the, way. the ship name and fucking hang a dutch flag and <laughs> the fuck did the dutch do bro i mean a lot it, they, when it comes to like pirating and, and, and back in oh. the day did a lot um <laughs> some of which we're, we should, we're not very proud of but you know i hey, mean hey them and the bulk of western europe so oh but we were like yeah. dude without us it was yeah. the Dutch, the Spanish, and the English that really fucked Yeah, that shit. fucked yeah. everything. Like we, um, Portuguese helped. The like, Portuguese no, like got the involved thing that a little we bit. Like, we were, like, America's, like, prime. <laughs> like, when it comes to slavery, we were, like, America's, like, prime supplier. Uh, so that's, that's something they'd be very proud of when it comes to my heritage. But, you know, it's what it is. It's what it is. I <laughs> acknowledge the bad parts there, of your heritage, too, there, so we can not learn my from fault, it. guys. All right? Don't cancel yeah, me because I'm Dutch. True. Thanks. I wasn't yep. there. I had nothing to do with it. Wasn't um, but yeah, pirate stuff. Pog. But there's always that running joke of like, "Oh, I'm gonna focus on ship and make a pirate campaign," <laughs> and now you actually get to do a pirate campaign, sort of. Yeah. So it, uh, I will say uh, I'm not looking forward in character it's to spending time around movie. Vera because I've just embarrassed the fuck out of myself ages ago, and I'm like, God. <laughs> oh, and that wasn't even would be the type of person purely, to like remember that and be like, oh, yeah, fuck, it's purely oh, Laura who fucked up, but now Dagon's gonna pay. Yeah, because you called like, so oh, her. You called her Kess's nickname, right? I called her Kess's code yeah, name, yeah. and like <laughs> she knows I was there when Kess was given her. Like, there's no yeah. way that Dagon I mean, should have made that mistake. I fucked up the darts code name last time, so you know. I mean, Fuck Brooks, your codenames, dude. Codenames suck. Brooks didn't memorize any of the code names. Like I'll be honest, Brooks, I I have them in notes. Brooks doesn't. Hers hers is the mermaid. Yeah, and Kess is the siren. Yeah, man. I yeah, guess you mix those two up when you're head. Yeah, over. And that's yeah, because, what I did. Because and I was mermaid like, siren is very similar. Yeah. Well, because I so I was just going for like sea creatures. What's like a good sea creature? So, so I was far, thinking of, like the kraken met, maybe could be a nickname. But, you've yeah. met the hawk. You've met the tusk. Shut up. <laughs> You've, haven't we met nearly all of them at the meeting? Hawk, dart, tusk, uh, steed, the steed, um, the dragon, the siren, and then there's the panther and the mermaid. And Brooks... Yeah. It's the tailor. The tailor, Brooks right. Is, the is that what we went for? Was it the tailor? Is that what we ended on? Yeah. yeah we went for the tailor. I suggested it, and then he picked it, but he doesn't know that Diagon came up with it because of communication. Yeah, she, she signed it to one of the NPCs. Yeah. Forgot to write yeah. that down in the notes. We can add it back. There, there you go. go. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Um, my dogs um, are barking, and I'm very sorry if you can hear it. It's just kind of. It's Brooke, a, I'm Brooke a mess, sort of dude. felt like the blacksmith was a bit on the nose and a bit too much of a giveaway. And... Right, right, right. Shut up, so, for the love of God. Uh, like, <laughs> like, the tailor makes sense because he's not a tailor. Nobody's going to go, oh, we need yeah. to find some random guy called the tailor. Yeah, but he walks around in, like, pretty well tailored clothes. And, he, and, he's, and he's, he's made a point to mention every time his shirt gets ripped, he gets very upset right, yeah, about exactly. it. Exactly. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of like he, that. Yeah. Brooks is incredibly vain. Because this very well presented image that he puts forward is very core to his defenses, right? He doesn't like the- he likes to dress like he's better than everyone else so that he can potentially just like 
pretend that he's better than everyone else and not have to deal with shit. And that's See, how he avoids. You guys, you guys don't hear dog, but stream does. I'm pissed. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, that's whatever. Because Discord, uh, Discord doesn't have crisp. Yeah, exactly. Discord has like pogo fucking. Uh, you can use RN noise, filtering. which is quite good. Yeah, it's whatever, dude. It's it's, it's not biggie. Sorry, Bell. Uh, but oh, we um, had that one. Yikes. There's a hey, lot. Bell, of... since you're editing these, do you want to put like just a little dog in the corner every time we hear a dog bark? With every dog. <laughs> nah, I'll make sure that for Sunday I have some proper lighting set up for, for D D. It's just or oh, for I know tomorrow. Damn well, I, for Bell tomorrow, I guess. For, for Bell, Bell doesn't have like hard cut these. It's just it's like just thirty three fucking... degrees Celsius. I don't want to fucking sit yeah, under it's... a fucking hot lamp as well, you know what I mean? So I figured for the discourse, whatever. It's thirty one here, it's not pleasant. Like tomorrow it won't be that bad because it'll be one AM so it'll cool down, then I don't mind you know turning a lamp on or whatever, it's fine, whatever. Right, yeah, I've got my studio light on and I can feel this yeah. side of me. It's like a yeah. patio here. Yeah, Bowdy mentioned the only plus side to our late session tomorrow is it'll be cool cooler, cooler. at least i mean it's still like yeah. 26 now. i'm i'm really out here suffering like for the sake of content but um <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna fucking strangle my dog uh i'm not twitch is a joke okay <laughs> right, my dogs. uh no she <laughs> fucking throws cats right um <laughs> right same thing close enough <clears throat> those as far as questions go that is it so um do you guys have any questions anything you want to know anything you want to you're like curious anything about I, 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 there's a couple of things out. actually i thought it was really funny that you like called the artificer got stuck in the fucking suits or in one of his creations <laughs> yeah that's funny because uh i, I just they, had this I like have access to our group chats when we're streaming because obviously i have the cams yeah. on full screen whatever it, about an hour um, before it happened yeah i just immediately was like wait what, what if, if he's, he's in, in the there? suit and that's why it can't detect him? Because it only sees the, you know, it only detects the robot. Yeah, it, like, yep. it, 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 yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what it was. <laughs> yep. I just, I, it just hit me. I want to know if now that I've decided to co-opt this, what was like throwaway cocktail for <laughs> potentially significant use, do you plan on... And like, was that gonna like? What's the scarcity level of that substance like around the world? Like, how are you gonna amend it at all now that you know my intentions for it, and maybe make that easier um, for me to come? No, or no, you like that part of the challenge? If there's one thing that's readily no. available, it's alcohol, especially in the bigger cities. Um, but it's not like it's a alcohol. It's, I figured there's a magical effect someone puts on it. Like, there's no physical liquid that would. Well, yeah, uh, no, do it's that, uh, it's right? it's one of it's the basically has to be enchanted. Yeah, 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 right. 100%. And it's gonna be one of the ingredients is. Uh, let me quickly have a look. Hold on. Like, uh, hold on. I'll do my research live on air. Um, Thoughts and prayers. Like detect thoughts. One of the components you need to cast that spell is a, a copper piece. So they'll somehow have, in, have involved a copper piece in the making of this cocktail like, to give it the same. It's like, the, like the wish yeah, it out. Right. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like that. Uh, it'll be, so like, it'll, it'll have to do something with like it needs to be brewed like uh, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, the components needed to cast detect thoughts, which basically is what kind of sort of what the spell uh, uh, mimics, right? The effect just on a smaller scale. But it, and it um, inverses it. It's now it's like your th uh, your yeah, thoughts. Right. Not, you're but not like detecting somehow, others. People are somehow detecting that, yours. that 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 the components needed for that spell will have to be involved it's like a mix in some of that way. And, like sending. Um, yeah, kind of. So, I, do you know what? I love the idea. Like, but now that, because I didn't expect that at all. I, I, I literally have, I have, I, it's not even my creation. Credit to, hold on, I'm going <laughs> to fucking shout them out right fucking now, actually. Uh, there's a website that does just like 100 random whatever for D&D. &D. Yeah. Um, so this was a oh, list it, made, uh, that they made. Uh, it's, it's a website called D&D &D Speak. Um, may have heard of it, may have not. I've been given a cat. Um, She's not so like this is 100 around. signature tavern around. drinks. And it's just on there, you know what I mean? Uh, there's probably more, because I haven't gone through the entire list. There'll probably be more shit on there, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me just randomly fucking scroll. Was, cause that was actually I mean, I have yeah. to assume that the sisters are involved in the making of a lot of these drinks, right? Because we're sort of in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Bye. Uh, so there's, let's, let's have a look. Him Farron's Luck, a bright golden colored beer named after a local drunk who woke up on the beach after a night of carousing or carousing with a chest full of pirate's treasure. He claims to have no memory of that night. You know, it's, it's, it, that's just, it's just drinks with some flavor text. But the thoughts and prayers actually has a practical effect. And I, yeah. you know, when I didn't think 
about the potential here for for Gaiden <laughs> to be heard now. But now that yeah, I now that yeah. it's a thing, it's super cool and super creative. And and kudos for you to kind of to you for like thinking about that because I sure as fuck didn't. Like immediately, because of course it was introduced the session I wasn't yeah, right. there, um... and I'm watching it back, and I was like, oh. so now, <laughs> so now I'm like, home. now I'm like, if this is gonna be the way Daigon is gonna express herself, I'd be a dickhead to make it super hard to get. Right? Let's be fucking real. <laughs> well, I don't again. I don't think she wants to use it all the time. Number one, it, it, it's alcoholic. But then even if like say we learn to make a non-alcoholic version, it, it's something you um, can't control. Like it gives yeah. everything. Well, that's True. the thing. It's like I, when she intentionally drinks it to communicate. It's Which like it's far funny. less likely that anyone's gonna hear Which anything she wouldn't want them to hear because, because you're directing it. But, but if you just but, had it all the time, you'd slip. You would but, not have that but, kind of okay. Control. But he, hear me out. Dagon is a monk. If there's any race or any class out there that is all about like, you know, well, they even they get stillness of mind as a feature, shit. and yeah, it's like, it's and I'm monk. all actual you know projective I mean? and shit, you know. So, this is a well, monk. Would, yeah, but not, no, but you. I'm saying like, as far as Daigon goes, she is the perfect class to know how to abuse that sort of drink mm -hmm. because that the stillness of mind and and you know what I mean, like that sort of shit. So like in that sense, it would make sense for Daigon to like find a way to control it. You know what I mean? Maybe. With our store credit, we could take we we could get the sisters to we could commission an item that has the same effect as you the could. drink. You could, yeah. Well, I was gonna say um she might have a thought to um talk to Jax on the ship, like Mister Crafty Man, and also because she she likes watching him work and wants to almost like be an apprentice. And it's like, could you? And she doesn't know how it works. Her thought is, what if you took like um something you could wear like bracelet earring necklace anklet whatever and you had you took some sort of casing and we could encapsulate like some of this liquid like put it in you know it's like those liquid core mm -hmm. resin dice like yeah. like put some of the this drink in that and then he could do whatever he does to make it magical well, and then could you make if, if, wearing if, if, if that Jack's bracelet have the it, same effect or something like because that, there is an know? item called medallion of thoughts which allows yeah. you it has three charges, which allows you to cast But, like, our thoughts. flavor of making yeah, 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 it could yeah, yeah, yeah. be but, he, but, like, but, does but, something but, like that. Yeah, yeah, but, like, he'll, so he'll make it from scratch. But I'm just I'm just looking at the practicality of it, because Medallion, Medallion of Thoughts lets the user cast detect thoughts three times a day, but oh. it's only an uncommon item, so I, there could be, like, a payoff, like, oh, if they want, if you want to make it a rare item, then it will be, like, an at-will kind of thing. You know what I mean? I was so gonna say, because... Basically, it'll cost Jax like, a little more you... money. It'll cost Jax a little more time. But Me at least medallion of thoughts out. means someone else can read. Right? Yeah, but like it's just like it's it would be, it would be that item, but upgraded but to homebrew. rare to make it yeah. at will. And then instead of detect thoughts, it'll be infused with whatever the fuck the, the there, there is a, there is a medallion of thought projection. Oh, there you go. So, so well, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Oh, either way, it might be something. Do you know what? Yeah. I was gonna buy dumb shit with my store credit. But Brooks would probably be willing yeah, to chip no, in there. Yeah, no, that's, if that's we true, James. Stuff, uh, James is saying uh, you don't actually have to be drunk to be drunken master. It's just an erratic style of fighting. Yeah, no, it's the, it's the art of convincing your uh, enemy that you're drunk, but you're actually very you mindful and, and thoughtful yeah, about Brooks, your movements I mean, and what Bro you're doing. Brooks yeah. doesn't drink that, that much. Yeah, and that's not related to like that's not what I meant by because because I, I joked I was like oh I'm just gonna change my subclass real quick so I can drink this alcoholic drink and do my thoughts like that. <laughs> I'm still gonna be a uh, astral self. Monk, I'm just saying the alcoholism was just uh, one thing that for the immediate near future, why Daigon's not going to go around like just on this drink all the time to talk to everyone all the time now. But also out of character, there's a little bit of a reason I don't want to make her use it all the time because I don't want to be like erase. I don't want to take away, this, this, to take away her disability because I also want yeah. it. It's kind of also a bit of a like being less than able. No, but it makes mean sense. You're, it like, makes lesser, sense the way right? it's and happening. It's, like, Right now, it makes sense because, like, you have something new, you're excited, you use it a lot, and then you're like, okay, time to chill with it and just really use it only when I really need to. And that's when it just yeah, becomes like a once in every life. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's the potential for a really wholesome and healthy uh, long term conclusion of Daigon coming to, like, the point of, I really could use this thing all the time, but I'm actually yeah. quite comfortable with. Right. Being well, it's also, who I am. She, she doesn't like. It's again, it's like, okay, well, how come it's my job 
to find a way. It's like I've already learned a whole new language I have to, to find a way to compensate else. to communicate. Everyone else could like it's I've already done some work to like and obviously like Kess learns at Crimson, like people can learn this even if you don't need it and like learning never a bad thing so she's still not going to immediately even if it was non-alcoholic even if it's like drink it once and you can maybe now do it forever she would hesitate because of the principle of the thing of being like you know what it's also a way to show yeah. that they're invested in the relationship or they care and it's not her job to have to find like she's already trying to and it's for emergencies for important conversations yeah, i was gonna say it's fun, one of those things where if Daigon wants to really like clearly say something you know you're oh you're about to head into a fight and Daigon has like yeah. an idea she, like that that you know fucking throwing out fucking gang signs naruto fucking hand signals yeah. for <laughs> or just like glug glug hey guys yeah. how about we do this you know for that sort of shit like that, that just makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Or like when I need to know that Kess isn't gonna interpret what I say and put her own filter on it because it's important, I'll drink that. Things like that, you know? True, but true, like true. The for, idea yeah. like... but for most of the time, she still would like to see the like others put in effort because as a sign of you care about a longer term relationship <clears> with <throat> me, you'd make the effort to learn, like kind of thing, like Brooks is doing, yeah. so. I, um, I, I personally like, DM brain wise, I would keep. I would want it to have some sort of drawback. So, oh, of course, to not, absolutely. To not want, not like not even from a balance point of view, but from a point of view of not quote unquote curing Dagon's disability. Yeah, so, no, like, absolutely. Like it's, know, it's the yeah, thought projection yeah. like, projects this is all a solution, your surface thoughts. But it's a solution that will constantly cost resources. Will constant. If exactly. you're getting an amulet to do it constantly, it'll be a very expensive fucking yep. fucking thing. Yeah, I I would like to. So, obviously, oh, it, so it's... fun fact. Uh, so for for uh, because the the crafting rules we're using is from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Yeah. Um, to craft a rare magic item costs five hundred. It costs five thousand gold. Yep. Jax has to be a sixth level artificer in order to be able to make it, and it takes two hundred days to make. So it's not That's something. That's the thing. I also figured it would take a long. It's ass a. Time. It takes yeah. two hundred in-game days for Jax to make. Which is why item, we could so. find out how much it would cost. That's definitely a long-term and... kind of like, oh, in the future, yeah. you know. Or, yeah, either the sisters or Halivara, if I was like, could you do this? And then I literally write down a date, and if we play long enough, 200 yeah. days later, I'm like, guys, we gotta go. <laughs> I, I like the idea that Daigon has something with, like, she can do it. She, like, a non-alcoholic version would be great, because, like, you can do it when it's important to you. But with the knowledge that yeah. it is all of your thoughts, not just the yeah. ones that you want to direct. Yeah. Like it is. This is like this case, the, the, the way I'm kind of looking at it is like this case is like Dagon's got a new toy and she's gonna use it and learn it and understand it and use it a lot because it's exciting and it's new, and then it'll die down. I don't think so. No, okay. I think it's well, be the that's, opposite. That's... She's gonna be using it sparingly at first, all partially because she's never been intoxicated. So she like to that yeah, level. Fair, so but, she's uh, afraid. Yeah, no, but also, it's like, what about um? Get Dagon trolleyed. Yeah. What about it? Because like when she's using it with Kai, it's like it's easy to control what thoughts people hear because I'm very focused in this conversation. I'm using it for an intent. But if I did it a lot and I got drunk, what if I then don't I lose? Because that's what I think. No matter how stillness of mind monk True. you are, if you're plastered, True. you're not gonna have that level. Even like, or who the fuck True. knows what's gonna happen? Oh, and then it's also really it's expensive. Funny. And Daigon also is very very stingy with money because she's been at times where she's not had it and her life has don't been be, like danger because be of that like, stuff so she doesn't want to keep <laughs> buying it there's gonna be some it, like fucking slip up right like you just Daigon's oh, gonna course. be fucking plastered the whole group is there Kess opens her mouth and you just hear you just like hear Daigon go oh this fucking bitch <laughs> yeah like I'm excited for whatever whenever we get to a point where I've needed to take a lot of it like say we have a lot of combat or something and I want to be able to communicate during right so I do like lots of shots and I and I actually not intentionally, but just end up inebriated fucking to that level. And then we a, see- literally poking a fight with every other party member. Yeah, because well, also, like... I don't even know what Daigon would be like drunk. Because so many of the ways I think of, and like the first things I think of drunk people are their verbal mannerisms, like their voices changing, slurred speech, things like that. And her balance, I think, would still be pretty good because she's a monk, high dex. Like even it's drunk, that loss of she's a self -control. Cat, feline agility. Yeah, so it's more just the inhibition walls would go down, especially because it's not like she's used to muttering under her breath or thoughts. I mean, because no one, she does, most people normally can't communicate with her ever. So her thoughts mm -hmm. unprotected would be completely unfiltered, probably very judgmental of people a lot of the time. So can't wait. It's that, it's that concept of like, she can be mid conversation with someone projecting her thoughts and focusing very specifically on what she's thinking about. 
Yeah, but well, she could be like signing and mid conversation yeah. be thinking something different than what she's signing but because like, she's not using. Like her if mouth. she drinks this and she sat thinking at Davian and very carefully thinking about what she's thinking to give off specific answers, because it is your surface thoughts. So you yeah. you know it's not a mind read. You have to think things that you want the other person to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And then suddenly Brooks is alongside you and goes, "Hey, what did you do this morning?" You You're you out. can't stop You're yourself <laughs> from thinking about it. Yeah. And then because your brain thinking, registers no, the question think automatically. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I fucking, I don't want yeah. you. Yeah, it's like he's like, don't think about a purple elephant. And then you're like, well, fuck. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mid-conversation yeah. with this drink, and Brooks is just like, where did you hide this thing that I want? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like open that, to yeah, abuse. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't think she's going <laughs> to use it a lot. She's going to, I fair. think it'll be different. It'll be, once she's done it a few times, once she gets more comfortable with it, and learning her limits, she might, or out of necessity, there'll be something that forces her to use it a lot. So I don't think it's going to be like, new toy, I can talk to people now. Because also, yeah, then it's fair. like that that's how I guess that's how I would do it. I'd be like, because it's, like, it's, <laughs> it's like very much like a, a child that's like, Pog, I got a new Lego set, I'm going to fucking play the fuck out of that for like two weeks and then probably whip it out every once in a blue moon. You know what I mean? One well, I mean, it's part of it. Then mm. there's a side of her very much warring like that, because also just that desperation for human contact when she's been so deprived of it for so or not human but just like you know sentient friendly contact yeah um that she's been deprived of for so long so there is part of her is very much like i want to just down this case and like let's go <laughs> that's you know a terrible idea <laughs> i mean yeah like yeah i really i really want i i like out of character i feel like there's some great moments that could be had with this there's great room for dagon to come to terms with some things there's, I have like ideas of like, Dagon gets an item that allows her to protect her thoughts. Kess or someone does something to piss her off, and she's like, you know what? I'm taking this off. I'm done for today. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. Yeah, that's, just that's just also that, takes yeah. the necklace off. Everything goes quiet. Refuses yeah. to sign. Yeah, true. Um, That'd be funny. I do think. I had another the... question. Oh. I can't remember because I know Jax obviously knows because Jax. I had to tell him, can you put this in the bag of holding? There's so much space it'll take. I, I can't remember, did I tell the rest of the group that I was planning on doing this or that I have this in our possession now? I don't think. I can't remember though if you I did. You were at the bar something. in a room that we were all in. And But I was but, signing to the bartender. So. Yeah, we, we went, the next morning, if anyone I paid went, attention, if yeah. anyone, I guess if anyone pays attention, you went, you walked up to the bar and the next day you put something in Jax's bag, unless you made an effort yeah. to do it private. Yeah, but did, but you not, did you not also talk to like Davian and them? When they like rocked up to the table at some point. Yeah, well, no, that, we mean that, about the specific in... fact that she has more of it. Oh, right. Yeah. The right, rest right. Of it, yeah. Do the rest uh, of it. Yeah, know. they know I did it that one time. No, we, and they right. were we like, know oh. that you put something in Jax's bag. Yeah. That's yeah. it. So, That's yeah. it. Okay. Okay. Because that'd also be fun to then just bring it out and what, wait till the party forgets and then walk up. The, what I think would be if if it was like an unlimited resource, she would pull, wait, spring, like go up to say Davian when he's fishing and then be far away, not like do, you know, jump up and like tap someone on the shoulders, but instead just in his head, just boo. And like her voice would be like, watch it be like, what the fuck? Well, like, like a, a built in thing <laughs> as well is that it starts off at, you so have to funny. be within two feet of someone, but I think it is. The more you drink, it gets it, wider yeah, and the wider. Shot, like the, the drink describes it as if you have another, that range becomes four. For, like if you have another within the time limits of, of the, the, the magic effect lasting, it'll yeah. add two feet to the range. So there could be, yeah. if you just, like neck an entire bottle that's eight feet around yeah. you and you know what i mean yeah. so like you you can amplify but the then fuck i'd be that. wasted eventually <laughs> True, just down but, on the okay. bottle hear me out <laughs> hear me out <clears throat> we oh, both get invisibility cast on us we both drink the potions we go into <laughs> the have streets. A good day. we wander up to like strangers in the street just thinking i know what you did <laughs> and then just hearing voices in their heads. Oh my god. I know what you did, or you just what else could you say that would really freak people out? I know I, or know, just like, I know what you're hiding. You smell what different like you're, when you're awake. Or no, just your underwear looks real cute today. <laughs> They're fully dressed. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what the fuck? Really like that oh, movie. You were asleep, you mama. The, the, that movie did in the mirror this morning it was cute. <laughs> Shit like that. Um, oh, I, th I think we're gonna uh, have to end it here because we're, we're yapping, which is good. Um, oh, before we go, before we do stuff, I I picked out a fucking. You were like, I didn't prep a tweet. I picked out a fucking D and D tweet of the week, motherfucker. Go on. Go on. There you go. go. On. Everyone in New York City, I make six figures as if it's a brag. They don't not even. That's not even enough for one short campaign. I have painted hundreds of many figures in my Dungeons and Dragons career. Oh. 
by yeah. at Jack Corbett. That's funny. That's oh a good one. God. That's a good one. Dude, I Love wish. It. Oh, bro. Okay, speaking of, we actually have to, like, get to, speaking of figures, get to that Hero Forge shit because yeah. uh, we have the budget for it. We have so, money in the, in, the, say, in the funds. We do. Make we have, mine we have the be the very last one because we already have a cat token. It's pretty easy to tell. It's like yeah, a tabaxi you know, token. Yeah, okay. So the people that we have a harder time with a token for them, you can do theirs first. So maybe, may, you know, maybe I mean, soon Brooks won't be holding a fucking frying pan anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. or, or Which mug. is no, ironic Brooks, because not Brooks last is a, session, Brooks, is, session a, Brooks is a mug, I think, and Jax is a frying pan and is a tiefling. Yeah. Like, yeah, it would be cool to like get, definitely get on say, that sooner Brooks rather than later. Two yeah. sessions ago, Brooks cooked with eggs that he sort of didn't steal. Yeah. Sort of didn't. Oh, steal. I also have one last question. He paid yes. out the nose so, for those eggs. Uh, so now that because then someone asked like, what does what did they hear? What does Diagon's voice sound like when I just and when I described it? So did any of you know the the reference, like the actor I was referencing yes. when I said what her uh, voice sounds I found like? It. I can't remember what her name was, but I I have her name right here. But I was gonna say, um, were you, what were you surprised? You like that fits? Or you like, oh, what's that's not what again? I what's the name picture. Again? Um, her name is Shore Agdashlu. I'm gonna put it in chat because it's spelled real funky. It's in caps because I'm, I'm sorry, but that's her name. I'm saying, what were your She's she's been Thoughts. in like something that I watched. She's been in Arcane. She's been in Mass Effect. She's been in The Expanse. Oh, she's I been bet I know what shit. character she voices in Mass Effect. I'm not even she... thinking. No, she's been in a TV show that I watched. Arcane on Netflix. She's no like the... a TV oh. TV show. Yeah, uh, she's, she's live action uh, stuff too. She's uh, Shalaran. There's this one fucking character that has like a super like deep. She, she's the admiral yeah. in Mass Effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so what well, do you she... think of that as the voice for Dagon, or what her voice I sounded like yeah. pre-injury? Cool. Cool. <laughs> it it it's not what I would have expected. It's yeah. a, it's a little similar. She's seventy. She does not look seventy. What the hell? She looks amazing. She looks fucking incredible. What the fuck? I mean, also when you started talking and describing the voice, I imagined uh, Anjali from Critical Role. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Dude, I can't Which believe is she's in, she's in fucking, voice. uh, she's in fucking, um, she's in fucking Miss Marvel. <laughs> Miss Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she is. Fucking Anjali. Ah, Anjali Bamani. Name. Yeah. Bamani. Yeah. But, um, so, like, she's in the MCU. That's kind of pog. It, it's not the voice I expected for Dagon, but like, it makes sense. And I'm like, I fucks with it. Oh, but, I know what I know her from. Uh, this actress, she's in, she's in the Punisher as well on Netflix. Like the Netflix Punisher. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's fucking. Uh, That's probably where I've like because I know that I've seen her face. She's as well. one of the agents, right? I think so. Yeah. Uh, okay, my dog is freaking out, so it is time to yeah, end here. Fine. But thank We're you so much now. for watching and listening and all that stuff. Appreciate you. Better lighting Call another next time. Tomorrow. Call another so tomorrow. Call another tomorrow. DS on Sunday. Okay. Weekend of D and D, baby. Appreciate you. Catch you Sunday. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Bye. 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 Bom bom bom. You gone? Bom bom bom. Bom bom bom. Do 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 dum. Now slowly like fade out. Just like. Bom bom.